Well, hello everyone joining us today. I'm super excited to be joining us for our virtual college exploration for all of our New Jersey students. Just a few things before our panelists take off and go on to their presentation. Um, if you are interested, we have more sessions throughout this week. Um, you can actually sign up on njacac.org slash virtual fairs. If you do miss a recording or if you have to pop off for a little bit, no worries. These are all being recorded and will also be available on the NJACAC website. Just a reminder that your presenters cannot see or hear you. So if you have questions, please use the Q&A um, option on, in Zoom. So they will see your questions and they will get to those for you. Um, but I will let them take it away. Thank you, Sage. And welcome everybody. My name is Jake Norton. I'm an admissions representative for Johnson & Wales University. Uh, thank you for joining us today. We picked Friday afternoon because we hope everyone's in a good mood. Smell that weekend. Uh, and I want to thank Strivescan and NJACAC for helping us put these sessions together. Hopefully you've had a chance to check out a few of them with the colleges that you're interested in. Um, we've been doing this since March. We're all Zoomed out. We're Google Meets out. We're, we're, we have a lot of Zoom fatigue, I understand. And this just doesn't get any less awkward at all over time where we can't see you and we can't hear you, but we know you're there. Uh, so, but we do appreciate the time today. Just so you know what our roles are, I'll introduce my colleagues here in just a couple of seconds. All three of us are based in New Jersey. So we, we recruit locally in New Jersey for Johnson & Wales University, wherever you might live. One of the three of us is your go-to person for admissions questions. We can help you through the process for as long as you remain interested in Johnson & Wales uh, throughout this year. Um, so please, you know, as time goes on, don't hesitate to contact us. Uh, anytime we are here for you. So having said that, uh, real quick, I just want to introduce my colleagues, Jeff and Tara. Do you guys want to say hi? Hey, everyone. Again, my name is Jeff Giacomo, one of the uh, New Jersey admissions representatives at Johnson & Wales. Thank you again for spending some time with us today. I am uh, one of the admissions representatives for the South Jersey um, area. So anything within Cumberland, Salem County, Burlington, Camden, Ocean, Monmouth, Atlantic, in that area for you guys. So and I'll finish you on the Tara. Hi guys, my name is Tara Kalivas and I am the admissions rep for Bergen County, Passaic, Essex, and Hudson County. So if you guys need anything, you'll get all our contact information. Feel free to call or text us. I know that's what you all prefer these days. And uh, we're here to help you uh, get through this crazy admissions process. It is crazy. Thank you guys. Um, Jeff, let's go over to, all right, there's the benefits of college, guys. We all know why we want to go to college, right? You go to get educated, you go to have an experience. If you pick the right school, it's the best four years of your life. That's not just a cliche, it's true. Um, and you want to jumpstart your career, you want to get ready for a career uh, in, in the industry that you're interested in. So yeah, why J. Wu? I say why not? Why not J. Wu? Let's go to, um, now go back, Jeff, I'm sorry. Let's go to our campus locations first. And just so you know, I, I'm sure, you know, those of you who have joined us on this call today uh, have, have probably done a little bit of research and know a little bit about Johnson and Wales. Uh, but we were founded over 100 years ago, 1914. We were actually one of the first colleges or universities founded by women. All right, uh, Gertrude Johnson uh, and Mary Wales were our founders, again, back in 1914. And currently we have two different campuses that you can choose from. Um, the main campus is in Providence, Rhode Island. And click on that bubble there. If you've never been to Providence, it's an awesome little city. Uh, it is small. It's the smallest state in our country and it's a small city. So if you're daunted a little bit by going to school in a major city, don't be. Think of Providence, I would say, as a big town. Okay, don't think of New York City, don't think of Philadelphia, don't think of Chicago, LA. Um, it is a very manageable, friendly place to navigate. Its population is less than 200,000 people, all right? It's walking distance to pretty much everywhere. It's got everything that a major city offers. Uh, you've got your shops and stores and cinemas and theaters, uh, museums. And you're also very close when you're on campus to the Dunkin' Donuts Center. That's our main uh, sports facility in Providence, Rhode Island. So you want to catch a concert or a basketball or hockey game and other events that they have. Uh, there's plenty to do when you, when you walk outside. Um, it's also a college town. 
All right, we're not the only school in Providence in that small area. If we could go to the pictures, maybe back, uh, Jeff, a little bit. Sorry about that. Um, just kind of take a look. Here's kind of a nice panorama of, of Providence. And that's pretty much it, right? So you can see down the bottom there, the nice green pasture, green fields. That's our Gaby Commons. That's just the corner of our campus. But from there, that's pretty much the city. So you can kind of imagine walking around, exploring. Um, and like I said, maybe about a 10 minute walk to the main, uh, the Dunkin' Donuts Center. Uh, that, that's pretty close by. Restaurants. If you like food and you like to eat and you're a foodie, you'll be happy in Providence. Um, big reason for that is one of our main, uh, or one of our most popular majors is the culinary arts, all right? Obviously we have more to offer, we'll talk about that in a little bit, but uh, a lot of our students and a lot of our alumni, they come to Johnson & Wales, they wanna learn how to cook, and they also wanna learn about the business uh, of running a culinary institution or opening up their own restaurants. And a lot of them are local, a lot of them stay, and so there are a ton of JU alum uh, in the state and in the city uh, that have opened their own restaurants. So you will never go hungry uh, in, this, in, in the city of Providence. And if you're, you know, if, if it's, uh, if you're looking for something else to do, you're about an hour from Boston and a little bit more action and everything that Boston has to offer uh, is right up I-95, like I said, about an hour. All right. Uh, Jeff, let's go back to uh, Charlotte, just so you know our other options in terms of campus location. Charlotte, North Carolina is our second campus. They call it the Queen City, a little bit farther away. If you're coming from uh, New Jersey and you're driving to the Providence area, depending on where you are in New Jersey, uh, it's about a four hour drive, maybe three and a half, four hours from where I am. I'm in Morristown, so kind of in central Jersey. So not a terribly long trip. It's not right in your backyard, you know, close to mom and dad if you want to get away. Uh, but it's also not a plane ride away, you know, if you want to get home for the weekend or uh, need to get home for anything. Uh, critical. You're not, not too, too far. Charlotte, like I said, obviously a little bit further away. I think it's about a 10 hour drive from where I am in central Jersey, uh, but a beautiful city, larger city, smaller campus. All right. Up in Providence, we have uh, a little less than 7,000 students right now at that campus. And in Charlotte, uh, it's a bit smaller. We have about 1,500 students, uh, but again, a larger city a little bit more action, uh, roughly a million people or so down in Charlotte. So you do have the option to choose which campus. All our curriculums are the same uh, at each campus. You do have to make sure that your major is available in Charlotte. Everything that we offer is in Providence. If you are interested in Charlotte, you gotta take a little bit of a closer look because there are certain majors that we don't offer down there. Um, the Providence campus, just to go back real quick, is split actually into two different locations. We have what's called Down City Campus, which is right in the heart of Providence. It's the picture that you saw a little bit earlier. A um, little bit more urban, okay? It's, you're, you're right in the center of the city. So sidewalks, a little bit more concrete, a little bit less grass. And that is where basically every class that we offer or most classes we offer that don't have anything to do with culinary, you're gonna be on the Down City Campus. That's where your classes would take place. We have another campus, it's about, I think, three miles or so from Down City um, called Harborside, all right? Harborside campus uh, includes all things culinary, baking and pastry arts, anything having to do with food, if that's gonna be what your major is, you would be taking classes on what they call the Harborside campus. That's got a little bit more of a campusy feel, and I, by the way, I would encourage you guys to do our virtual tours if you haven't already, so you can check them out. Um, you pull in off the road and it, it feels a little bit more to me like a, a college campus. Not, I'm not trying to say Down City's uh, a bad place or anything, but um, just more of a traditional um, landscape, so to speak. It's a beautiful campus. It overlooks the harbor, uh, thus the name Harbor Side. We have the um, Cuisinart Center for Culinary Excellence there, which is where all our labs are located for culinary arts, mixology labs, wine labs, baking and pastry labs. It's an amazing uh, structure, uh, kind of, I think it's only a few years old, but millions of dollars poured into that and uh, just a, a state-of-the-art building uh, over at Harborside. It's also where all our athletic programs are, our athletic center and all our teams compete on that campus. And if you do check them both out, no matter what you're studying, if you prefer one campus over the other in terms of its vibe, its atmosphere, if you just feel more comfortable at one of them, you can live at either or. 
Doug, you don't have to be a culinary major to live on the Harborside campus and vice versa. Whichever one you like better, that can be your home. And we have shuttles, wildcat wheels, we call them, that go back and forth from each campus from about 7 a.m. to 10 p.m. every day, or until midnight, I think now. Uh, so you always have easy access. It's about a 10 minute ride between campuses. All right. um, where are we? Academics. Jeff, let's go to experiential education. All right, I love this slide. This is very important because experiential education is something that we really, really pride ourselves on. Um, and what is that? It's a fancy way of saying hands-on learning, right? How do you learn? You learn by doing, uh, I think. And so anytime we have a chance to get you out of the classroom and doing things, we take that opportunity. You're certainly gonna spend your time uh, sitting in class, taking notes, just like a traditional education, but you're gonna have much more opportunity uh, to get out of the classroom and experience things um, hands-on, because I, I really think that's how you learn. For example, you know, I could talk to you for three hours about how to build a robotic air hockey table, you know, in a robotics engineering class. I can lecture you for three hours um, about how to cook a chocolate souffle. I can lecture you for three hours about how to secure a crime scene. Um, how do you learn to do those things? You go out and do them, all right? Criminal justice majors are going out and securing crime scenes, not real ones, all right? But it's just, you, you learn much better when you're doing it instead of just listening to someone tell you how to do it. And we take that to heart. Look at that top slide. This is very important. Career outcomes rate. This is actually a defined term um, by schools. An outcomes rate at an institute, a, a higher education institute, is basically defined by six months after you graduate. And I'm talking about our J. Wu alum. So you graduate typically in May. Six months after that, 97.7% of our graduates are either full-time employed they're attending graduate school. And I think the third criteria is they're enlisted in the military. All right. That is a very high outcomes rate when you compare it with other schools. And when you are talking to other schools and other admissions counselors and staff like ourselves, I would always ask that question because that really speaks to the preparedness of our students. When they walk across that stage at graduation, they are ready to get out there. Um, and employers know it and they hire our kids. How can you tell? Look at the internship numbers that we have, all right? Last year, 2,654 students out of, what did I say, a little bit less than 7,000 completed an internship. So it's not just your junior year that you're doing them. It's not just one internship that you're doing. You can do multiple. We have wonderful networks across the country, 46 different states we have internship programs in. I believe 30 or 40 different countries that you can go to and do an internship. And you also have a much better chance of getting a paid internship with Johnson & Wales because of the decades that we've been doing this and the, and the networking we've done and relationships we've built uh, with partners in the industries. All right, you can see right there, uh, paid internships aren't guaranteed, they're competitive, right? They're tough to get, but you have a better chance with us, uh, again, because of the relationships that we've built. So after completing an internship, look at the, the success that our students have had in terms of employment, 71% of kids that have finished a paid internship have been offered a job by their employer, all right? Another way uh, we kind of take internships to the next level or the next step, because everyone's gonna tell you how great their internship program is, right? If you find an admissions counselor that says, ah, our internships aren't that great, let me know, because that's not what we do. We, we talk up our programs. But nowadays it's kind of like, well, what do you mean by that? Why are your internship programs good? Um, what we do is we vet our internships. And Jeff, if you want to start clicking through some of those uh, along just to see what the testimonials are. I did not go to Johnson & Wales myself, um, but these are just a few examples of recent alumni uh, and their take on their internship experience. But we vet our internships. And what I mean by that is there's a stigma out there, there's a little bit of a cliche that, you know, an internship is uh, I'm getting the boss coffee, uh, I'm running errands, I'm not really learning anything. And unfortunately, that can be the way it is at some places. We ensure that when we send our students to internship programs that they are learning what they want to learn, that they're learning something different every week. And if a kid comes back to campus and, and informs their, uh, you know, their advisor, like this isn't really what I'm looking for, or they're not challenging me, uh, we fix the problem, all right? So these internships are very productive. They do prepare you. And they are just another way 
um, that we get you out of the classroom and, and doing hands-on learning. In addition to internships, look at that, 80 study abroad programs. You can go to 40 different countries. You can do an internship in a foreign country if you'd like to. We have advisors, we have, uh, if you come to Johnson & Wales, you're gonna be assigned a specific ex-head experiential education advisor. That's in addition to an academic advisor. That's in addition to an admissions guy. That's in addition to a financial planner. You're going to have somebody to go to for any question that you have, and you always know who to go to to help you out. So our experiential education advisors will talk to you about internships. Let's talk to you about the different opportunities you have and which countries you can go to. Um, and they're, they're a, a, an invaluable resource. This is just a quick list of new programs that I believe either began this past year and are just starting uh, or will be, in, uh, uh, will be beginning next fall. Let me just take a quick look at those. I never thought in 17 years, if you just go back a sec, Jeff, uh, this is my 17th year in admissions. I, I, I never imagined I'd be promoting a cannabis entrepreneurship program, uh, but it is a legitimate industry now. Uh, it's a growing industry. It's got a lot of buzz. Um, the demand is high. Uh, I just made three puns in about 30 seconds if you didn't catch any of those. But um, in all honesty, though, it is, uh, it's a new industry and um, it's, it's, it's going to be growing. And, and, Whatever your thoughts are, uh, it's, a, it's a, a legal enterprise now, and um, you know, we're, we're getting a lot of interest in that. Exercise science and economics, I think, are long overdue, but they'll be coming here as well. All right, we can continue on, Jeffrey. Very proud of this. Obviously, culinary is one of our staples. You might know that. We also have many other different majors, too. I think we might have gone over a slide. Don't just think of us as a cooking school. I'm not quite sure what you guys are interested in, uh, but if it has nothing to do with culinary, um, you know, please feel free to check out our website. We have over 60, 70 different majors uh, that you can join. However, since our most popular major and, and kind of our claim to fame are the culinary arts, we're always trying to evolve um, and stay ahead of the game in terms of, uh, you know, new technology, new innovation. So we just introduced this year the College of Food and Innovation Technology. We refer to it as CFIT. And so it really expands what our students can learn when they come there. Yes, you're gonna learn how to be a great chef. Yes, you're gonna learn the business, but we've really delved into now the sustainability aspects of food, all right, creative aspects, uh, minimization of waste in food production, how different foods are prepared uh, and served in different cultures and how that affects uh, other areas as well. So you can see the list there uh, and it'll really kind of help you hone in on uh, you know, what, your, what your talents are within that industry. Uh, I think we've gotten to the point where I'm gonna hand off to Tara. I thank you for your time. All right, guys. I'm just gonna talk a little bit to you guys um, about student life on campus. Um, so student life, I mean, it's a little bit different now with this whole COVID situation, but prior to COVID, um, it was a very rah-rah, fun, really good atmosphere school. I mean, our students go to the athletic events. Um, we have over 150 clubs and activities, so our students are really involved. Um, we have Food Truck Friday, which is one of my favorites. We have an ice cream social, a prom. So we really do have a lot going on on campus to get you involved and meet new people. I also always recommend getting a job on campus, whether you're work study or not. It's a great way to take up your time after class because remember, this isn't high school where you're in school from 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. every day. You're gonna need some things to fill up your time once you're done with class on your off days. Um, so a great way is to join a club, whether it's a religious group or an athletic event or whatever it is, um, or get a job on campus. Um, so you really do have that fun atmosphere for you all. And then we can move on. I think we're going to go to um, Res Life here. So um, we do have great virtual tours right online that you can take a look at. Um, as Jake had mentioned, um, in Providence, we do have the two campuses. So you can pick whichever one you want to live on. We do have singles, doubles, triples, quads, apartment style. They're actually quite large. I've seen a lot of dorms through the years and they are quite large. They have, um, some of them have air conditioning. 
We're also a very gender friendly school. Um, so you can live with anyone that you'd like. Um, you can even pick someone if you know somebody from your high school or if you want to do it like our match.com survey where you fill it out and uh, we match you up with someone like yourself. And also since Jake mentioned, since we are um, a cul well, we're not cul uh, only a culinary school, but we are known for culinary. Our food is actually fantastic on campus because some of our chefs or our chef, um, our student chefs cook on campus. So it's not like a regular school where you're going to go and get greasy, gross food. You're actually getting legit good food because we are known for our culinary. Um, freshmen are required and guaranteed housing. So you don't have to worry about that. And coming from New Jersey, it would be too far to commute anyway. Okay, we can move on and see. If you are part of an NSO, a national student organization in your high school, that's a wonderful thing. Congratulations, especially if you do hold a position. Um, but it is a great way to also get a scholarship with us. Um, so we definitely do, like I said, about the 150 uh, clubs and organizations. It is another way to be involved and get some scholarship money as well. All right, so moving on to athletics, we are um, Division Three Varsity Sport NCAA. These are our bunch of our teams. You can take a look at that. Along with our varsity sports, we also do have club sports and intramurals. So our varsity sports is obviously the most competitive. And like I said, our students really do go and have a great time um, and really show that school spirit. Now, if you don't wanna be as competitive as that varsity sport, we do have club sports. So club sport is also competitive, but it's not backed by the NCAA. And you will still travel to different schools and play different schools. Now, if that still is a step too competitive for you, what I would suggest is playing intramural sports. That's what I did when I was in college. I did soccer and flag football and softball. And it's just a fun way to get involved and meet people, stay competitive. Um, it's a great thing to do after your classes um, and just have a good time. So you'll see on campus once you get there that um, there's advertisements and there's actually a night that you all go out and you can talk about different ways to get involved, whether it's through athletics or for a club or activity. Um, but if you are interested in playing that Division Three athletics, um, I definitely would get in touch with the coach right away so that they can start recruiting you. Um, definitely start that communication as soon as possible. All right, the nitty gritty of school. It's not as scary as you think. Um, so if you go to JWU A, 94% of our students do get a FAFSA financial aid package as well as a merit scholarship. The nice thing is there's no extra um, um, application for that merit scholarship. As soon as you apply, you're automatically enrolled for that merit scholarship. And if you do get an acceptance letter from us, you will as well get that merit scholarship right there so you know what you're looking at. Um, it is after October 1st, so I definitely would recommend filing for your FAFSA as soon as possible. The way the government works is it's kind of like a first come first serve. So the earlier that you apply, the more potential you have to receive more funding. So definitely if you can do it as soon as possible. Um, our code right there, as you can see is 003404. That doesn't matter if you're applying for the Charlotte or the Providence campus, it's the same code. So you're just gonna put that into your FAFSA right there. Um, now about the merit scholarship, like I said, there's no separate applica application and um, we will get into uh, what we require, but I would definitely submit as much as you can to us. So we'll get talked about that in a little bit. Um, here are some scholarship resources. I wish I knew about this when I was going to college. Definitely take a picture of it or we can always send you this information because every little bit counts, every thousand dollars in the bank counts. Um, so these are just different ways that you can get scholarships and we will accept that money. Um, because like I said, every little bit helps and this could be added on to your merit scholarship or your financial aid package. And one of the really nice things about uh, Johnson & Wales and I think sets us apart from other schools is if you do get that acceptance letter, you will also get your own personal um, financial planner. So that is somebody who you can reach out to at any point through the entire process once you're accepted and they'll be able to help you kind of understand your financial package your scholarship, how much is expected of you, what kind of payment plan can you go on, grants and loans, and really explain that whole process to you because it can be confusing. So you will get your own personal one to really help you through that process. All right, so what are the next steps? 
I don't know if you guys have done this, but we have really been working hard on our Explore From Home. Um, it's a great tour of both of our campuses. Um, we've gone, you know, obviously everybody has gone virtual this year, so I definitely recommend it. Plus, we do like to see that demonstrated interest. We do like to see that you are on our website looking around. Um, so definitely recommend doing that. And then the next one is visit. So we did actually just open up some of our visits on campus, which is exciting. It is limited. You can't go into every single dorm or building, but it does give you a good feel of what Providence looks like and what campus looks like or what Charlotte looks like. That way you, you really have a feel of if you feel comfortable there. Um, so if you feel comfortable traveling outside of New Jersey or just anywhere, I definitely recommend it. But if not, like I said, our virtual visits are wonderful. So you really can still do that right online. And now the nitty gritty of applying. Um, so we are on the Common App. We are also on our own application right on our website, or you can do the paper app. You really do have any uh, choice that you would like. It is completely free to apply, which is amazing. Um, so you can apply real easily. We, all we need is the application and the high school transcripts. Everything else is optional. So we really are truly one of the easiest applications. So I always say to my students, why not just apply? It's completely free and it's easy and then see what kind of financial package you get from us. And then you can kind of take it from there and see if we're the right fit for you. So the things that are optional are the SAT, ACT scores, your essay, the letters of recommendation. Um, now, if you've had to do them for other schools, I would recommend submitting them to us because it will never negatively impact your admissions decision. It will only positively impact a merit scholarship. So if we see a great essay or a great letter of record, you did really well on those SATs and you just didn't think you did, we may be able to boost up that merit scholarship because we're looking at you holistically. Um, so we may be able to help you out there. So if you feel comfortable, I would submit them. But again, at the very least, all we need is the application as well as the high school transcripts. So our only big deadline is actually approaching. It is our early action one, and that's coming up November 1st. That is not binding by, by any means. The benefit is you'll actually hear from us by Thanksgiving, which is pretty phenomenal. I mean, think about being at the Thanksgiving Day table this year and being like, I am in somewhere. Um, so that is exciting. Um, but if you miss that, it is no big deal. We are rolling admissions after that. You can, you can apply up until March 1st. Um, we will accept outside credits as well, as well as AP, AP, and, IB, uh, AP and IB classes as well. Um, our average GPA is about a 3.0, a B. Um, but we do accept, you know, we look at the holistic review. So we do look at all of the students that do apply. So never be fearful of applying to us. Just submit that application since it is, you know, free and easy. That's kind of Johnson and Wales. So at this point, I think what we'll do is we'll open up uh, for any questions and the three of us will be happy to help you. If you guys don't feel comfortable unmuting yourself and talking, feel free to put it in the chat or any way you guys want, we'll be here for you. And no, then, I don't think they, have, they can talk if they want to, but if you have any questions, uh, just, just type them into the Q&A there. Um, and there, there was just, uh, you know, one other thing I kind of wanted to touch on, um, you know, because we're going kind of quick because we're up against a deadline. I didn't talk much about our faculty. All right, and our faculty are one of our, the, the best resources uh, at Johnson & Wales University. First of all, class size and faculty, they kind of go hand in hand. We have about an 18 to one ratio. Uh, which usually translates to, to, you know, what your average class size is going to be. Um, 17, 18 on average, I'd say. You're doubtful to ever be in a class of more than 30. Um, I, I, you know, I don't think that would happen. We don't have big lecture halls, all right? You're in the kind of classroom environment uh, where you have a lot of intimacy with your faculty members and they become your friends, they become your mentors. Uh, pretty quickly. Not every, not every professor is going to become your best friend, but we draw the distinction between, you know, a place that has 60, 70,000 students where you're going to be in a lecture hall, literally with two, 300 kids. Um, you raise your hand and the professor might call on you. Sometimes you have to click a button so your little bulb lights up just to get their attention. Uh, so it's a little impersonal. I'm not saying those are bad schools. It's just a different kind of learning. All right, uh, Johnson & Wales is the kind of place where at the end of the first day of class, you raise your hand and the professor will likely call on you by name. And that's where that relationship begins. And it can begin even before that. Uh, reason I brought it up is, like I said at the very beginning, the three of us are here for you throughout this process, but we don't always have the answers to everything. 
if you call me up and say, tell me all about your, uh, you know, your integrated design program, I'm not able to do that. Okay. But I'm going to tell you who can. Um, so reach out to faculty, especially at small schools like us. They love to talk about what they're passionate about, especially to juniors and seniors in high school who are thinking about attending their institution. So I can, I know, I, I recommend this to everybody and I know, you know, at a young age, it can be intimidating. It can, you can get nervous. I get that. But these guys are looking for you to call them and talk about their program. So no matter what it is that you're interested in, if you go to our website and you can click, our website's awesome, by the way. It's easy to navigate and there's a ton of information on there. Um, check out the program. Every program has a page with internships that have been offered, starting salaries and different jobs you can get with a degree in that major. Um, a full course listing of the course catalog of the classes you're going to be taking and faculty contacts. They're there for a reason. All right. You can get their phone number, their email. You reach out to them. You say, Hey, I'm, I'm Jake from Morristown high school in New Jersey. I was wondering if you have a few minutes to chat about X, Y, or Z programs. And they're very nice people. They're very down to earth faculty. We hire a lot of people that have come from the profession they're teaching. So they're not going to be working in the, you know, whatever industry anymore, but they're still passionate about it. And we've, we've hired them as professors. So they have the experience, they have the know-how, uh, and they love to talk to you guys. So don't be scared to reach out to, to professors and faculty, even while you're still in high school. Right. That's my advice to you guys. Sorry, that was kind of a tangent there, but uh, I know we had a little bit of time and we skipped over that. Any questions coming in from the group? Don't be shy, we're normal people. We love questions. How about you type in what town you're from? Can you guys handle that? Just so we have a sense. Radio silence. Jeff Tower, you got anything to add? Nope, just so you guys can find us, um, you know, on the website or all of our contact information. So like we said, feel free to reach out to us. We're here for you guys. Um, we can always do another presentation or talk to you guys again or your parents, anything that you guys do, know, do need, we're here for. We know it's a tough year for you guys. Another thing to add too, we are doing virtual visits at the high schools in the state of New Jersey. Um, so if you can keep an eye out at your local guidance office on the website, or if you are in person or hybrid model, um, just to keep an eye out for college visits, we are visiting majority of your high schools. So we are gonna try our best to um, make sure that we can still visit your school in some kind of format for you. Um, also just to explore one more thing to add on to the explore from home. Uh, if you have interest in the Col College of Culinary Arts, um, also known as CFIT, that's the new name, um, we are doing uh, culinary cook-alongs with our chefs where you have the opportunity to really get more of in-depth into the uh, culinary majors that we do offer at Johnson & Wales. It's not your traditional presentation like we gave. You get to be more hands-on in your own kitchen and actually follow a cook-along, which I think is pretty unique. Something a little bit different versus just having to look at um, your Zoom screen. So uh, just something to think about. Uh, but we really appreciate you guys giving us a few minutes um, of your time today. We know that there's a lot of colleges you could have chose, but you chose to look at Johnson & Wales. So we'd just like to thank you for that. Um, and if you guys have any questions, again, feel free to type away. Um, but if not, you're more than welcome to uh, log off. But thank you guys for a few minutes. We really do appreciate it. That was absolutely great. Uh, thank you guys so much for joining us today. Uh, just a few last minute things for our students and families before they log off. Um, there will be a quick survey that appears when you do log off. So definitely fill that out really quick. Doesn't take very long at all. Um, I highly encourage you sign up for more sessions. Check out a few other universities that you might be considering. You can find them at njacac.org slash virtual fair. Um, and if you want to reference this video or see another college that you might've missed, the recordings will be available also on the same website. So definitely reach out, uh, watch those videos. And if you do have questions, follow up with your panelists. They are happy to touch base with you and get to know you and go over any questions you may have. Uh, but thank you guys all for joining us today and I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day.